Shalom, Yashallah, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders of Yasharallah. Call Haloyim Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Harakakwadash, for blessing our elders with the spirit of truth so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and the Akwathi on this keeping the faith and the works. Y'all keep at it. It's your brother Abaya coming at you with more precepts. Uh, let me see. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 12 and verse 6. It says, the words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. Right? The words of, of the wicked are to lie and wait for blood. The policies that they make, the different, um, <clears throat> the different laws and the different um I'm trying to think of the word the different contracts right that they attach to different uh, causes that are just basically deceitful for real one main um main contract I can think of is um uh, our forty acres in the mule that we never received that was literally um uh, a drawed up paperwork and um they forfeited on it as they do countless other things. When I say they, I'm speaking about the wicked, speaking about the daughter of Babylon. But this is a book that I purchased uh, a few years ago. And uh, I advise you to get it, man, because scripture tells us to be circumspect, right? Uh, so that means we're supposed to be aware of um, all things. Uh, it, it tells us to, uh, I'm roughly paraphrasing all this, it tells us to be aware of um, all matters, whether it's great or small. So we're supposed to um, understand um, things that the world don't. And this book exposes the tactics of the enemy, right? So what had me reading this book again is the assassination that happened in Haiti, right? And I know a lot of people have been... Um, you know, watching the riots and everything, but not a lot of people is asking why are they rioting, right? So the spirit just jumped on me, and um, I got real curious about that thing because, like I said, I read this book before, and I understand the tactics, and it was looking real familiar, right? The stuff that was going on in Haiti. So I'm going to read a few passages out of this book. All right, first I'm going to read the introduction. This is the introduction to the book, The CIA's Greatest Hits. It says, in order to survive, nations need strong intelligence services. It says, but the idea that the CIA is primarily an intelligence gathering operation is itself one of the agency's greatest propaganda triumphs. All right? So, if you think the Central Intelligence Agency is strictly about gaining intelligence. You wrong, right? When you look at them movies, you look at the Born Ultimatum, you look at 007, right? You look at um all these different spy movies, bro. That's the CIA. It ain't about no intelligence, bro. It's about them making moves on behalf of the people that are in control, not necessarily the U.S., but it's about the people that are in control. Basically, these are their hitmen. All right. It says, despite its name, which the CIA said, the Central Intelligence Agency's main purpose is this, their main purpose is and has always been carrying out covert operations involving economic warfare, rigged elections, assassinations and even genocide All right so that's what these individuals who operate under these alphabets that's their real goal All right it ain't about well what what are they doing over here or what are they doing over there nah they making moves to make the world All right so that's the introduction now, I'm going to give you a few instances of some hits. I'm going to kind of pull from a, uh, from a few of them. 
few quotes. So this is hit number 34, Iran slash Contra. Right, I'm not going to go in depth with what the hit was about by the book. You can read it, find out for yourself. But this is an extra that I wanted to take out of it. It says, all CIA, all, not some, all CIA covert actions are supposed to be authorized by a presidential finding. But Iran slash Contra ran for years without one. Once the participants realized they were committing impeachable offenses, they had the president sign a retroactive finding. It was later destroyed to protect Reagan. That Reagan is President Ronald Reagan, right? Um, but the point I wanted to get out of this hit was all CIA covert actions are supposed to be authorized by a presidential finding, but they're not always because it's people that's over the president, man. Please don't get fooled. That's just the face, man. He the lead singer in the band. He's not the manager. All right. Um, this is hit number 19 in this in this book called CIA's Greatest Hits. Hit number 19, Laos, says, but the CIA didn't rely primarily on such namby-pamby techniques. It was speaking about rigging elections. Um, it says, starting in the late 1950s, they recruited a mercenary force of some 40,000 men to attack Pathet Lao forces, known as the Army Clandestine, or the Secret Army. It says about half its members were from Thailand. The rest came from Taiwan, South Korea, and other U.S. client states. Despite the size of the army clandestine, the path at Lao had enough support in the countryside to withstand it. it says by 1964, after another CIA coup succeeded in installing a right-wing puppet the path at Lao was completely frozen out of the electoral process. They'd begun receiving aid from the neighboring North Vietnamese who were concerned about CIA-backed sabotage and assassination teams operating from Laotian territory. When the path at Lao made significant advances, the U.S. military got directly, although secretly, involved. All right? So... When you see a coup, meaning it's a person that's in charge of a country, they're not operating how the U.S. wants them to operate. Then all of a sudden, the people start to riot and they kick the person that's in charge out. And then some other random individual out of nowhere comes and takes that man's spot. That's the U.S. involvement. That man is now operating with the ideals of working with the U.S. All right, I'm saying all of this for a reason. Just ride with me, man. This ain't going to be a quick one, too. You're going to have to really use your brain on this one, right? Because, like I said, it, it, it just rose. My curiosity was tingling when I heard that the, the, uh, the, pres uh, the president of Haiti got assassinated. Like, why, why would he get assassinated? What's the problem? Like, what's going on over there for this man had to get taken out? Right, and then like I said, I read this book. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so that's all I wanted to get out of this book. Basically, how they operate is like I just said. If they have a, a issue with a state or a country, they cause chaos. Out of that chaos, the person that's the contrary to them gets taken out. They put their person in, and now that person is allied to America's thoughts and ideals. All right? Hold on one sec. All right, so this is an article from the Washington Post. It's entitled, Twin Epidemics in Haiti, Violence and Coronavirus Usher in critical phase in wake of assassination All right so i read i read the um article and this particular point stood out to me 
me see. Yeah. All right. So this particular point of this article stood out. It says Haiti is one of a small number of countries in the world that has yet to roll out a, a coronavirus vaccination campaign. They haven't done it yet. It says and the only country in the Americas. The country was among the 92 low and middle income countries offered doses through the COVAX facility. A WHO linked effort to distribute doses while other countries have moved forward, albeit with limited supply. Haiti has yet to receive any of the nearly 760,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine allocated through the facility, a spokesperson for COVAX confirmed, right? Says the first batch was originally expected to arrive this spring, but was delayed after Haiti reportedly missed an administrative deadline. Right. So what that is saying is they were supposed to been got the vaccine. Right. They were supposed to been got jailed up. But the people that were in charge kept delaying and kept delaying and kept delaying and kept delaying. Now, the question is, why would they continue to delay? All the rest of the countries over here have gotten down with it. That's what it just said. All the rest of the of the Americas have gotten down with it, but this particular space held off. All right? Let me see. It says Laurie Adrian, general director of Haiti's health ministry, also raised concerns in April that the country lacked the infrastructure needed to properly store the vaccines. The Associated Press reported, but back then, we weren't in the same situation as we find ourselves today, he told the, the new humanitarian. All right? This is a tweet from Vera Bergen Gruen. Haiti remains the only country in the Western Hemisphere and one of five globally where the government has yet to administer any vaccines. That's eyebrow raising, right? So I'm going to leave that right there where it is. I'm not going to speak on it. Like I said, I just read an article. I'm not insinuating anything. All I'm saying is that raised my eyebrow when I read it. I'll be right back. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 12, and verse 2. It says, A good man obtaineth favor of Yahweh, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. That word devices means plans or plots. Right? So, the Most High is making, he, he's working right now. He's blessing the righteous to be able to see things and, and to be able to hear things that the rest of the world just can't, right? But that man that's operating in wickedness, the wicked, who the Bible speaks of, right? The Most High says that man's plot, he will condemn, right? Because his plot ain't got nothing good about it, man. You just have to see the plot to understand that, right? So this is Monique Kleska, Haitian pro-democracy advocate. Right? Soak that in. Haitian pro-democracy advocate. And the Haitian people will not accept it. We will protest. We will 
fight and we will continue to bear to continue the fight to get a democracy but not a democracy a la journal as mr moise had said before his unfortunate brutal and untimely death no we will do it the way haitians want to do it properly and and money democratic way uh, Monique Plask, I wanted to ask you why, in your sense, what what is your sense of why Claude Joseph agreed to hand over power uh, to uh, to uh, Mr. Henri, to Ariel Henri? Uh, because it seems almost like who is who is less illegitimate because they were they were both uh, got their power from a uh, from uh, the the assassinated uh, uh, leader who was himself uh, questions about his. See that? Assassination after assassination after assassination. And these are the people that they have in charge. She finished out of her own mouth. She don't know how these folk got in charge. They just got there. CIA's greatest hits, man. Uh, ability to hold power uh, uh, after not being, uh, uh, after his term ended. They are all illegitimate. Jovenel Moise was illegitimate. He held power in a very a autocratic a way. He was a dictator. He should have left back in February. The Prime Minister Claude Joseph was illegitimate because he came from Jovenel Moise. It's the same regime. Ariel Henry is illegitimate. They are all illegitimate. And that's what we're saying. Why did Ariel Henry decide to step aside I have no idea I have no idea who whispered anything in his ear all we know is that before Jovenel Moise's corpse was even called the, they were saying the US and the UN were saying it should be Claude Joseph then a few days later they change and say it should be Ariel Henry whatever is being cooked on the back burner somewhere in the U.S. Embassy, the U.S. State Department, or the U.N. A B New Office of Madame Lalim, really has nothing to do with the Haitian people. We actually, at the commission that I'm honored to be part of, had several meetings where various groups of civil society came to discuss a draft agreement, and they agreed that the Constitution 1987 should be respected. They agreed that there should be a provisional president and a prime minister and are about to set up a committee so that they can decide and propose names to be provisional president and provisional prime minister. And it has come from an elaborate, consensual a process over the last four months with political parties and civil society. That is what we are saying. It is up to the Haitian people. And we cannot continue this way to have our sovereignty just stepped upon, not only by the United States government, but also by the UN and also by the likes of our Yellow and Claude Joseph, who await instructions from the State Department and from the U.S. Embassy about what the American media is getting wrong when it comes to covering the assassination in Haiti? Well, I think they have to look at what is uh, the motivation. Uh, first thing, uh, it's inconceivable to me, to us at Haiti Liberté, that the U.S. Embassy could not have been aware of this. This had a giant footprint. Uh, they're monitoring cell phone traffic and internet traffic. So how did they not <clears throat> know about this? They blew the whistle on a similar attempt uh, 20 years ago against uh, President Preval and told him, and the uh, conspirators got rounded up, even though they got away and later were part of the coup d'etat against uh, Jean-Bertrand Aristide four years later. But in this, time, this case, uh, somehow they let it go forward. So uh, really, we have to ask, why would the U.S. do that? What Did they feel the situation was so out of control in Haiti and that Moise had sort of um, 
failed in his mission to keep uh, that neo colony stable that um, he needed to be taken out and they needed it done in such a way that it would justify foreign military intervention. So we think. Here's the book of Proverbs, chapter 12, and verse 12. It says, The wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. Basically, what that means is the wicked are going to follow their forefathers in wickedness. They desire the net of evil men. The same traps that their forefathers used back in the day is the same things they desire to use today. Flip side of that. The root of the righteous men, which are our, or the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. The root is the origin of that thing. The forefathers of the righteous yieldeth righteous fruit. Right? Scripture tells you when, when the earth is, I'm roughly paraphrasing this too, when the earth is in uh, being controlled by the wicked, the earth mourns, the world mourns, everything mourns, the people mourn, the animals mourn, the air, the water, everything is in mourning when they are in charge because of those wicked plots and plans that they always carry out. And they feel like they will never get touched behind their past. All right. Let me see. Go to the book of Psalms. Uh, chapter 10. And verse 4 says, The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after power. Power is not in all his thoughts. This man could care less about thus said the most high man this man is all about having his own idea of power and control right it says his ways are always grievous thy judgments are far above out of his sight as for all his enemies he puffeth at them all right it, like i said he may care less about thus said the most high all right and as far as all of his enemies, it ain't like his enemies are people that do him wrong. It's just people that he doesn't like. All right. He puffeth at them. Says he had said in his heart, I shall not be moved for I shall never be in adversity. Like I just said, he felt like he can bully everybody else, but can't nobody bully him. All right. Verse seven says his mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. I don't know what happened. I don't. I don't know what the what the. I have no idea why they would do this and how he got here and there. Yeah, you know. All right. Verse eight says he sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. That's what it's all about, man. That's what it's all about. They move into something new. And they know we're not with it. They know they're with it because it's all about them. But they know we're not with it. Right? It says, he lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. That's a trap. That's a trap. All right? And two-thirds. Y'all already fell into the trap, man. Right? Scripture tells you never to trust thine enemy. But our people are trusting in the enemy as today. Right? Like the past is is the is the past. That's how that's why they keep getting over on us. To be real with you, man. Yashallah, so called black man, so called a Native American man, so called Hispanic man, and all our people around the world. The reason why they keep getting over on us is because they play on our love. They know that we are the righteous people of the earth. They know this. They know we can't operate in certain wickedness because it just ain't in us like that. And they play on it. Right. That's why Christianity was invented. It was literally invented to make sure that we don't rile up. That's why it was made. Right. It says in verse 10, he croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. That means he going to get low, going to act all soft. Then them goons coming, man. That's the same thing. If you read the CIA's greatest hits, that's how they operate, man. That's how they operate. 
it was one agent I seen um dude made a um a had an interview, a ex CIA agent back in the day. He said, um, they not coming at you with like big burly dudes to come and make a country do something. He said, they coming in there with suitcases. It's gonna be a man in a suit and tie, slim cat, coming in there with a suitcase, gonna offer something. If they with it, that's what's up. If not, then they proceed with, with the next part of the plan. That's how these folks operate. All right. Let me see. Uh, let me go to the book of First Maccabees. I'm going to end with this one because it, it kind of ran long. But like I said, ride with me, man. This one going to be no short one, too. This is going to be some, some real, um, real in depth. Let me see. Um, First Maccabees. Chapter 8 and um, verse 1. It says, Now Judas, hold on, slot. Mm -hmm. All right. So it says, Now Judas had heard of the Romans. Here we go at Rome. All right. Because that's basically where we are. That's who rolling over us. It's the same people, just under another name. All right. It says, Now Judas had heard of the Romans that they were mighty and valiant men. And such as would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them, and make a league of amity with all that came unto them, and that they were men of great valor. It was told him also of their wars and noble acts which they had done among the Galatians, and how they had conquered them and brought them under tribute, and what they had done in the country of Spain for the winning of the mines of the silver and gold which is there, and that by their policy, by their policy, by their policy, those are laws, those are contracts, and by patience, just waiting, waiting on these folk to bite on this big, this big lump sum that they see on on the contract, the the the, you know what I mean, the good hype talk that they giving you to get you all excited about joining these folks, it says and by and that by their policy and patience. They had conquered all the place, though it were very far from them. And the kings also that came against them from the uttermost part of the earth till they had discomfited them and given them a great overthrow so that the rest did give them tribute every year. They doing the same thing they forefathers did and they going to continue to do so till Shiloh come, man. All right. So I'm ending with that, man. Most I will in these precepts in this video edifying. Call Halloween, Yahweh by Shimmy, Yahweh Shah by Shimmy, Rokaka, Dash, Shalom, Dash, Shalom.